Good morning. This is the Reverend Vicki McGrath. I'm the rector at All Saints Episcopal Church in Millington, New Jersey. Today is Sunday, March 29th, 2020, and it is the fifth Sunday in the season of Lent. And we are gathered here to worship this morning as we are still in our stay safe, stay home um, uh, orders from the governor and uh, direction from our bishop. And so we're gathering to worship here this morning uh, in an online way, even though we cannot be physically present with one another, we are very much connected. We are all held in God's loving arms and the prayers and praises that we offer to God today will, uh, will indeed be our offering of love and praise and also our connection with one another. So if you have a Book of Common Prayer at home, an Episcopal Book of Common Prayer, our service will begin on page 75. If you don't have a Book of Common Prayer and you're part of the All Saints community, uh, you should have received a, um, uh, an attachment in your email with the script for this morning. Uh, it's got all the psalms and the readings in it and everything that you need to participate. If you're just finding us online this morning for the first time, we're so glad you're here to join us and to be with us. And don't worry if you don't have anything to read from or uh, say along, speak along with, pray along with. Just know that you can listen and say amen when, uh, when it seems indicated. You can type those things in. Um, by all means, please do that. And there is going to come a point in the service when we will ask for your prayers and intercessions and thanksgivings, and by all means, type those in as well. We'll also come to a place in our service where um, we'll have a little time of reflection on the gospel reading. And that reflection uh, will be a time for you to write in um, something that caught you in the reading, something that you wondered about, something that spoke to you. Uh, do know that the Holy Spirit does speak to us through the scriptures, um, not like a telegram, but in the sense of a little nudge or a gentle push or a whisper. Sometimes we get gobsmacked by scripture, but not always. And um, those are all ways that God speaks to you and speaks to us. And a particular word about this gospel reading this morning, we're in the gospel of John and these readings are very long. Uh, and there's another, there'll be another aspect in this reading, which uh, will be in many cases, the community that um, Mary and Martha and Lazarus are part of in that gospel story, they will be referred to as the Jews. I will be reading, I will be speaking the words, the Judeans, because what was historically appropriate and accurate at the time when the gospel was written um, was one thing. Where we are now is another thing. And what we're trying to do here is refer to the people who were living in Mary and Martha and Lazarus's community, not all Jewish people everywhere. So um, I'm going to make that slight change if that seems a little surprising to you. Um, I have it on good authority from uh, the Wright Reverend Dr. Uh, Nicholas T. Wright, Tom Wright, uh, who makes that suggestion that we do that. He's a, a preeminent biblical scholar and British bishop. So, um, so we're making that change for that reason. Um, and now we're going to begin our service with uh, a bit of music. This music is from um, the, the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And uh, this hymn is sung by the First Plymouth Church in Lincoln, Nebraska.
And now our service continues on page um, 79 of the Book of Common Prayer. I will begin with two opening sentences and then we will go right to the invitation to the confession. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and repents of evil. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us with patient and obedient, penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now we will say together the Venite on page 82 of the prayer book. There is an um, opening and a closing antiphon, which I will say, and then we'll all say the um, Venite together. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for this morning is psalm number 130, found on page 784. Psalm 130 on page 784. I will read aloud the odd numbered verses and I would ask you to respond with the even numbered verses. I'll say them quietly here. And then 
we conclude the Psalms uh, with the glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Um, just a very bit of direction here. When we are together for the celebration of the Eucharist, for Holy Communion, we say the Psalm in a different place. Uh, we say it after the Old Testament reading usually. And there is no, uh, no glory to the Father afterwards. But in morning prayer, it comes first. And it's, a, it's an, act, an act of praise. And so we do put that, that glory, that gloria patri, as it is said in Latin, uh, at the end. So, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I have called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now we will have our first reading. It's a reading from the book of Ezekiel. And you may be familiar with this passage because it's also one of the very important readings that we hear at the Easter Vigil, usually every year, um, the great vigil of Easter on Easter Eve. And here it is on the fifth Sunday in Lent. So even though we are in the depths of Lent, we are still being pointed towards, uh, towards the great vigil of Easter when we can proclaim the resurrection of our Lord and the cornerstone and ground and reality of our faith. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley it was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost and we are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, 
Thus says the Lord your God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us say together Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah, found on page 86 of the Book of Common Prayer. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from the Gospel according to John. And as we listen to this reading, please pay attention and listen to the ways that um, the Spirit might catch your attention or nudge you. Is there a word or a phrase that stands out to you? Think about how God may be speaking to you in and through this passage. It doesn't have to be a, a big thing. It doesn't have to be a theological statement. Just how is God touching you, nudging you, speaking to you through this passage today. And then after we say the canticle together at the end of this reading, we, I'll then ask you to type in your, uh, your nudges and your uh, aha moments, or even your questions, and we'll have a little conversation about that. So now, the reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped her, his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Judeans were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, 
but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I was glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Judeans had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and he's calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Judeans who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up and quickly go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary saw where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Judeans who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Judeans said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there's a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face unwrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Judeans, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us say together Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. 
on page 92 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, and you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Now we've come to a time when we can have a bit of reflection on our scripture reading. Um, if you had a question, not question, well, a question or an aha moment or just a word or a phrase that stood out to you in that passage, that reading of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, what might that, um, might that be? Why don't you type it in to the, uh, to the comments, to the chat, and I will try to read them and um, we'll kind of share those out and see perhaps where the Holy Spirit is speaking to us today. So if you have a, a comment or a, an aha moment, please type it in and we'll all try to take a look at that. I'm just looking to see if anybody typed anything in earlier <clears throat> and I'm not seeing anything. It's a long passage and there's there's a lot to take in. Okay. All right. Ah, so Barbara says what stood out to her was those who believe in me even though they die will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Thank you, Barbara. That's a good thing to be thinking about in this time of, of illness and people dying. Jeannie says, he was deeply moved. Jesus wept. Sometimes we forget that Jesus has, had, in his earthly life, had human emotions and took those emotions and feelings and experiences with him in the ascension. Jesus does indeed feel deeply. Allison says, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Even in our very difficult times, God is present with us and, and God is glorified. Carol says, there is hope from our Lord even when things look impossible, dry bones and a man dead four days. That's right, you can't be any deader than those dry bones, and yet all is possible to God. Suzanne says, I keep hearing references to the hymn, I am the bread of life. There's always those wonderful crossovers back and forth between scripture and liturgy and hymns and all of those resonances that the Holy Spirit brings to mind and speaks to us so deeply through. Lisa says, your brother will rise again. Those people who are connected to us so deeply will, will never leave us in life, um, this life or the life in God's greater and eternal presence.
This is a passage that you may want to sit with throughout the rest of the day, throughout the coming week, to ponder and pray over and see where God speaks to you in and through it. And now let us say together the Apostles' Creed, reaffirming the faith that was given to us and that we embraced in our baptism. The Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Continue with the prayers on page 97. The Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Continuing with Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. collect of the day for the fifth Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for Sundays. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Mission O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now ask you to type in your intercessions, thanksgivings, people for whom you're praying, and we will begin with the parish cycle of prayer and also the parish prayer list, and then I will read your particular concern, prayer concerns for today. In our parish cycle of prayer today, we remember and pray for Joyce Culzer, Janice and Ernest Latiri and Trevor, Jasmine and Carrie Ann, Susan Levan, Ellen Lewis, and Pam Lewis. And in our parish prayer list, we remember especially Norbert Connolly, Charlotte Davis, Nikki, Rook, Joyce Culzer, Noel and her family, Cecilia, Sam Rothwell, Michael, Anne B. Titus, Don and Teeny Kuhn, Suzanne Traub, Audrey and Edward Roller, Phyllis Wallace, Grace Ward, Pat and Vin, Scott Horway, all those struggling with addiction, especially those who are not able to meet in their meetings now. And in the intercessions and thanksgivings from, uh, from those gathered here today, the world and all who are and all who are homeless in particular. Martha's giving thanks for the safe return of her cousin's cat Dante. We are praying for Susan Negrato. Bob Scapati is praying for the repose of the soul of Helen Carter Scapati. We pray for all the healthcare workers and first responders. Linda's praying for her beautiful niece who is also a nurse and a non-believer who called after prayer and asked, why did God create this illness? And my response was that God didn't create this illness, but he did create the response to us, to it, our first responders. Pray for all first responders and all who are struggling to know God in this time of great sorrow and difficulty. We pray for the migrant children held in captivity we pray for Meredith, a friend of Jennifer's, who died from the virus. She, like Jennifer, was a Down syndrome person. Bishop Hughes prays in thanksgiving for all the people of All Saints Millington and their rector, Vicki McGrath. Let us offer to God all the unspoken but deeply felt prayers of our hearts and our thanksgivings, remembering that all these prayers are offered through the intercessions of our Lord Jesus, through the power of the Spirit, and held in the almighty hands of love of our holy and loving God. Amen. And now we continue with the general thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, 
for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. The prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining together today for morning prayer. We're especially grateful that Bishop Hughes was able to join us. Thank you for coming, Bishop Hughes. It's wonderful to see you. And if you've joined us for the first time today, it was wonderful to have you with us. We'll be back again this evening at 9.30 p.m. for Compline, which is a short 15-minute um, service of bedtime prayers of the church. And then tomorrow night, tomorrow evening at 6.30 p.m., we'll be doing evening prayer, much shorter than what we did today, but uh, at a different time. And um, so if you're here from All Saints, uh, come and join us for a coffee hour, virtual coffee hour on Zoom at 11 o'clock. Link to that, please. I hope many of you will come and join that. And um, I pray that your day and your week will be a time of blessing, even in the midst of great difficulties. Uh, know that God is walking with you through this day and this time. And a particular thank you to Allison uh, Senior Brown for um, essentially live chatting the, the service as we went. Thank you, Allison. It made it so much easier for all, all of us. And now God bless you and go with you and see you again next time. Thank you. <music>